guys, so I'm here again to do a mid-month wrap-up. I'm pretty much still reading as much as I was in August, so since it's the middle of September and I've already read six books, I thought I would do a mid-month wrap-up and give you mini reviews of these six books I have already read. There's been some really good ones in here, so hopefully uh, some that will interest you. But without further ado, let's get into the books. The first book in my pile you will have seen in my autumn TBR, and it is The Room by the Lake by Emma Dibden. This is published by Head of Zeus, and it is a thriller novel, and one of my favourite thrillers I've read recently in my sort of thriller binge that I've been going through. This one was set in America, but our main character is from London and she has had a lot of things happen in her life recently that have sort of finally come to a culmination, a lot of tragic things and she's just decided to kind of run away from it all. So she runs away to New York and uh, meets a young man. Uh, they very quickly become very close to one another. He too has had, you know, some things that have affected him in his past and they just are very drawn to one another. He then asks if he can introduce her to his parents, or his family, I think he might say his family, and takes her to sort of more rural US, somewhere outside of New York, and introduces her to his family, but as it turns out it's not his biological family, it is a group of people who all live together sort of by the same kind of philosophy. They eat the paleo diet, they, you know, exercise lots, they do group therapy, that kind of thing. And um, she's obviously pretty furious at him for not telling her where he's bringing her, but it's sort of meant to be a kind of like recuperation sort of group that sort of help people in their time of need which she is, so she becomes part of their group. Obviously has lots of elements of like cult-like behaviour and this one was much slower paced than I was expecting it to be. There's not tons and tons of action, it evolves and uh, unravels quite slowly but at a really nice slow pace. Um, there's always something to keep you interested and I think the writing is very skillful so I've constantly felt engaged and I wasn't bothered that there wasn't action on every page, I was just enjoying this sort of unnerving slow sense of build up and um, learning about this cult to be honest. I wanted to go there, it was done in such a way that you almost felt like, well, yeah, I would want to stay there, that sounds amazing, I'm going to live by the paleo diet, <laughs> that kind of thing. So I think the author created a really convincing atmosphere and really convincing characters and I really liked it. Yeah, all round, I think it was just a really good thriller. So I'd definitely recommend it to those of you that like that kind of book or are looking to get into that kind of book. It's really, really good. Unfortunately, the next book I did not like quite as much. And it's the Witch's Kiss by Catherine and Elizabeth Carr. You'll know that recently I've been reading a lot of witchy books as well and I just picked this one up really randomly in the bookshop because it was about witches and thought hey I'll give that a shot, it's a young adult book. It's, you know, it just sounds like the other books I've been enjoying but it just didn't work. Uh, it's about our main character who is a witch, her mother was a witch, well is a witch, her grandmother's a witch, she's you know, long female line of witches. However, her mother hasn't wanted her to practice magic for whatever reason, so she's not as skilled as she could be when um, a strange, young, murderous man comes at the behest of a wizard, time travel stuff, what, I don't know. Um, so stuff starts to happen and she kind of needs to be a good witch. It just, the characters were so flat, I'm sorry, they felt so underdeveloped, particularly, you know, the mother and the grandmother, um, they didn't feel like fully rounded real characters to me. Her friends, you heard a little bit about them and how important they were to her, but they didn't seem like real people either who had real character. Uh, the one redeeming thing about this book is the relationship between our main character and her brother. Uh, her brother, I think, is one of the better developed characters and I really liked their relationship. I thought it was really nice how close they were and how supportive they were of one another, um, how they interacted and um, how they were both a big part of the plot and worked together. I liked that, but the rest of the characters were really flat. It felt like these two characters were just existing in a not real world of other flat characters and the plot was very much, here I'm going to tell you what's happening rather than actually showing you. So she's constantly hearing about things that happen or knowing about being told about things that happen or suddenly something changes but you know for no real good reason. I don't know, it just was very much 
tail not show which is not great um, and it just fell pretty flat for me this one. It's part of a series but I definitely won't be picking up the second one. I did listen to one audiobook in the first half of the month though and that is the second book in the Parasol Protectorate series by Gil Carragher, that being Changeless. This is a sequel to Soulless which I read last year while listening to an audiobook. I did enjoy this one as much as the first one but I still enjoyed it and it's a series I will be continuing with. I love Gil Carragher's imagination, I think these books are so much fun that they are period novels set in the 1800s but in a world in which the supernatural is known to everyone so there are vampires and there are ghosts and there are werewolves and they are just part of society um, they you know work alongside everybody else in Britain and according to the like sort of royal rule um, but they also have their own systems in place to manage themselves and our main character Miss uh, Tarabotti is a soulless or a preternatural, which is somebody who, when supernaturals come in contact with them, don't aren't supernatural anymore. It's like they're human again, and she's very unique. Um, and she she's so great. She's she's a really great fun character, and I really enjoyed this book. But I have to say, I really just have to say, a large portion of this one is set in Scotland, and there is a main character in the first one who's Scottish, uh, Lord Macon, um, and we go to Scotland for a large part of the second book, and. I said this already the first one, I think the Scottish dialect is atrocious, it does not read the way real Scottish speak, even I imagine in the 1800s. It was just like, I'm just gonna, f you can't just, you can't just fling in the words dinny and canny and uh, ken into otherwise completely English sentences and expect it to sound natural or like actual Scottish people. I'm sorry, <laughs> that annoyed me as a Scottish person, it probably wouldn't annoy you if you weren't Scottish. But don't take that as a, as a criticism not to read the books, the books are really really good fun. <laughs> a book series that I have literally no criticisms of because I gave the first two five stars and I'm now reading the third one and expect it to be a five star too, is the Gemma Doyle series by Libba Bray, the first one being A Great and Terrible Beauty. This book blew me away. I was so astounded by how much I enjoyed this book. I was intrigued but not expecting to adore it as much as I did. It's probably one of my favourite fantasy series I've ever read now and one of my favourite young adult books I've ever read. <laughs> it's set in 1895 and follows our main character Gemma Doyle who has lived all of her life thus far, the first 16 years in India and has recently moved to a girls finishing school just outside of London and what makes her special is that she has visions of another world and there's a lot of magic going on behind the scenes. I, I wrote a review of, of this book on my blog and I don't feel like I can say it any better than I did in that review but these books are like a combination, particularly when you start getting into the second one Rebel Angels. They're like a combination of Light the Witch in the Wardrobe, Jane Eyre and Jane Austen and um, The Craft. They are about young girls growing up in a time where they are incredibly restricted and have very little freedom or choice but want those things and, and have the desires of um, young women of that age or women in general and exploring that and um, you sort of the, the the tense relationships at school and making friends but also kind of lashing out and you know finding your footing in a world where you're very much a second class citizen and also dealing with first sort of sexual awakenings and attractions um, to other people and it, it blooming brilliant it is so good the magic is phenomenal it's so interesting it's quite dark these other visions of these realms that um, Gemma Doyle has visions of and they get darker as the books go on which I think is quite nice and it's really interesting in the second one to learn more about um, these magical realms. I really enjoyed that. I think they, yeah, like I said, were very quite dark and mysterious and really good and I also like that loads of this is set in London because I love books set in London period and modern novels and the third one that I'm reading now is in part set in London and part set in the finishing school so I'm very pleased with that. So I feel like I'm rambling but these were 5 out of 5 stars, really good books, absolutely love them. And lastly for this wrap up I read Black Eyed Susans by Julia Heberlin. Um, this is another thriller novel, it's an adult thriller and oh there's so many things I liked about this book. 
It's definitely for people who enjoy sort of CSI, forensic, detective, mystery type TV shows, whether it's like true crimes or fictional ones. It's definitely for people who like that kind of thing on TV, which I do. Um, I really liked all the little forensic elements of it. And it's really well paced. It gets, it's slow in the beginning, but slow in a way that I like, and then it just sort of builds up and builds up and then gets quicker and quicker and quicker. And a way that it does this is that it flits between two time periods. So it follows our main character, Tessa, who when she was a teenager was abandoned in a grave with the bones of two other girls and the body of another girl and sort of with the expectation that she would die as well or that she was dead, everyone thought she was dead, but she was rescued. So she's the lone survivor of a serial killer essentially. And a man was convicted of the crime and is on death row and it's now been almost 20 years later and the man who's on death row is about to be executed but Tessa is starting to have her doubts that it's the right man in prison so she then ends up helping the lawyer who's trying to get this man off of death row uh, as well as trying as well as she's trying to figure out who actually did this to her and if he's still out there. It flits between that time in the present when she's involved in this case as an adult, a mother herself and 1995 when this incident happened and we see her in her therapy session so most of um, the flashbacks occur within her therapy sessions with her doctor post the crime trying to explore what happened to her because she doesn't have a lot of memories of it and that's why she can't identify the face of um, the man who attacked her. And I really like that and like I said it gets faster as it goes on so it switches between those two quicker you get shorter periods with each but each time you finish one you want to read more, it's, it, it's very good, it very much hooks you in, I think that structure worked really really well, um, the mystery unravelled really nicely and then I have really mixed feelings about the ending. <laughs> I loved it in some ways and didn't like it in other ways, I think it was really good and I didn't fully guess what was going to happen although it gives you hints but it never fully gives it away which I like, I don't want to know the ending and I definitely could have seen it going other ways and it's not that I'm disappointed with the way it did go, I just think it happened all too quickly at the end. I think the end needed to be longer. Um, and I think just sort of explored a little bit more because some of what happened at the end just felt too much like, well this is what happened, I've spent all this time building up with you and I'm just going to quickly just tell you what happened at the end. And I think I needed more reasons behind exactly some of the stuff that happened at the end and um, how the people that were involved were treated, I think I needed more. but. I still thought it was a really really good read and I really enjoyed reading it and I'm going to pick up more by this author. But those are all the books I've read so far this month, um, a really good mixture of stuff in general um, that I really enjoyed and I'm currently reading some more books that I'm really enjoying. I'd also like your thoughts on any of the books I talked about in this video, um, whether you've read them or are interested in reading any of them or if you have any books that you'd recommend to me on the basis of any of these. But until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon, bye!